everyone, I'm Chester44, and welcome to this Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights. Last episode, we made our way into the host tower of the arcade and learned quite a bit. There was a fair bit of fighting that's been going on in the tower, and a new head archmage was elected, or declared himself head, Maugrim, this person we've heard about as the leader of the cult. He's in charge of the host tower now, and there's still fighting going on in here. We also learned that he's been gathering allies, the Uthgard Elk Tribe and the Orcs of King Obold Many Arrows, in order to form an army to attack Neverwinter and the rest of the North. We don't know what his purpose is yet, but we'll find out. He also got Erebeth in here, and it seems like she's going to join him. Very worrying. We need to get through the tower. Unfortunately, we can only access the second floor through, well, this. In order to get anywhere else, we need to get some rune stones. All we can get to is the second floor, so let's go. Take a look at the second floor. Level two. There's some fighting. By the gods, what have I summoned? We summoned a green slot. It looks like. Savage fury. Pretty good tough. Right, kill the tomatoes. There we go. And it dropped a slot time. Alright. That's this floor. Training and combat dummies and the like. Alright. Let's start looking through this floor. A couple fire arrows. Nothing else really here. Alright, let's take a look in this room. Blaskar Lauthan. Actually, you know what? An intruder? Do you have any idea who I am, fool? I am Overwizard Blaskar Lauthan, and you shall regret our meeting! I want that summon. that dire spider. Poison. He's invisible at the moment, but he will die. Dalen, did you get poisoned? He did get poisoned. Okay, there goes that guy. Laskar Lauthan. Ooh, sixth floor portal stone. That is actually useful to us. Ooh, he dropped quite a bit. Wand of Missiles, can't use it. And Staff of Defense. Uh, staff usable by sorcerers and wizards, cast ghostly visage, mage armor, and protection from alignment. Not bad. We've got a ring of clear thought for a bonus to intelligence, and a ring of protection for a plus two armor bonus. Not that we need either. Ow. Ooh, third and fifth floor portal stones. I'm just going to try and organize it. Three, four, five, six. I don't know how many floors there are, but we're going to slowly but surely work our way up. Okay, he's lost a lot of strength, but... I think we can spare... Actually, you know what? Just cast Lesser, Restor Blech. Lesser Restoration on him. And also give him this. Okay, that's quite a bit. Now let's take a look at what else is in these rooms. Got a couple rooms here. There might be something in one of them. A host tower acolyte. Down he goes. That was easy. And an acid arrow. Did drop anything? He did not. All right. What about this room here? Absolutely nothing. Oh, no, wait. There's a chest. Ow! That was actually quite painful. Uh, 
Not too keen on that happening. Doesn't appear to be anything in here. A chest. Bashed yeah. open. Thank you, Dalen. A fourth floor portal stone. So now we have three, four, five, and six. Okay! We can get through a lot of the temp of the uh, tower this way. Another acolyte. Down he goes. I shall do as you ask. Alright, and in this chest we have a raised dead. Okay. One more room to investigate here. And another acolyte. We managed to get an invisibility spell no. out, but he's going to go down. No. Oh, he's a no. No, no, he's not. He's a human. Weird that that's what he shouted out. Doesn't look like there's anything else in here, though. So, that's second tower cleared. Excellent. And now we have access to the third, fourth, and fifth and sixth floors. We're going to slowly but surely work our way up, so our next stop is going to be the third floor. Okay, glad we opened access to so much of the tower. Alright then. Take the host power portal to the third floor. Up we go. Hmm, this is... Quite a bit of damage and the like. There's some things going on here. Corpse here. Dispatch. What's this? This scrap of paper was obviously written in a great hurry. Malgrim's forces have completely taken over the North Tower. Archmage Arklam is nowhere to be found. How did Malgrim gain so many followers without being noticed? It's beyond belief. Deltagar has commanded us to turn loose the experiments. With luck, they will be more trouble for Valinda and her men than for us. If you find this and have not succumbed to Mogram's lies, flee the tower immediately. Do not fall into his hands. The secrets of the Brotherhood will not be lost. We shall return. Curious. Oh, wow. Plus two halberd, fox's cunning, and a plus one comma. Nice. Might be something in here worth noting. Doombringers. Oh, a gargoyle! Hello. Let me guess, the rest of these are also gargoyles? And this one too? Yep. Alright, what have we got here? Cure critical wounds. And the book Blood War Research Journal. This thick volume is filled with numerous details on the planner experiments the Arcane Brotherhood have been performing. At the request of Archmage Arklam Greeth. Most of the entries go into extensive detail. It seems the wizards have attuned several portals to the Abyssal and Hellish Plains, attempting to research the eternal blood war being carried on by the demons and devils. No conclusion seems to have been drawn, but it is pointed out in several places that one curious property of the portals is that their attunement is easily disrupted by material of the opposing planes. One wizard warns that trying to actually send material from one plane through the wrong portal could be highly destructive. Interesting. Okay, can we investigate this bookshelf? Yes. That's also a Blood War research journal, so we've already read that. That's probably important for this floor, for whatever experiment is running on is going on around here. And of course there are traps. this portal portal imp ravager <laughs> me too you man thing <laughs> this is a hellish portal a more armor porous ray we can sell that ale the flames of the brazier appear to be cold, and give off an aura that is unsettling as you draw near. The magic emanating from this device is almost palpable. 
Examine the Brigier more closely. There is an image of another place just beyond the flames, making you believe that the Brigier may be some manner of portal to another plane. The portal appears to be two-way, although anything entering from this side would have to be very small. There's no way to bodily move through it. Leave it alone. I'm guessing these two portals basically cross with each other. For the blood war! Rah! The Quasit's Eye. You know, stand in way. Yeah, there's a big battle going on in here. Quasit's Eye. I have a feeling what we're supposed to do here. Yes, there's an imp's eye. Let me guess. Yes, imps are coming out of this portal to the south, I believe. So I think if we throw a quasit eye into this portal down Make here. This fight count. It will be always be the best. That tells you eternal enemies of the tannery. I bet if I throw a quasit eye in here, that'll basically take out that room. And then we'll be able to investigate that room up there. Taste my savage fury! Fortunately, these guys are easy to defeat. It did sound like that's what we're supposed to do. Put a Quasit's eye in the flames. There is a bright flash as a Quasit's eye is swallowed by the flames. Ow! A moment later, the brazier begins to quake violently, and then it exploded. Okay. So now we need to get to the other side and put an imp's eye in there. Well, thank you for that, but I can't see the other two. Yeah, yeah. Alright, now, let's get to the other portal and turn it off, quickly. Here comes another closet. A couple more, including a greater closet defending it. Can't see it. Okay, Dalen, you kill it then. Proton Skull Crusher. Good against orcs. Alright. Abyssal Portal. This is the one we gotta throw the Imp's Eye into. Imp's Eye in the flames, and... Explosion. Alright. That destroyed both the portals, and now we can see if there's anything of use here. I have a feeling there's not going to be much loot that's of value here, but... I may as well investigate all of them, see if there's anything of value. Like a fire a gate. A cheap gem that's not really needed, but it's something. I really have been fighting for a while. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything else of use here. Now let's see what's actually in this room. Book piles containing... Delayed Bast Fireball, and some lab notes. Hold on a second. Actually, that doesn't actually affect anything. Oh wait, I actually wanted to take a look here. Host Tower Lab Notes. This book explains that the focus of a lab found on this level is to summon a powerful weapon. The arcane ritual appears to mention two ingredients to be placed within the alchemist's apparatus, a gargoyle skull and a slad's tongue. It is not clear which spell is a catalyst that summons the item, but the final line reads, Dispel the magical essence from the components that you may reap your reward. Which means a spell of dispel magic, which we cannot cast. We can get the reagents, but that's it. And we've got 
Full plate plus one. Actually, hold on. There. Kind of wanted to do that. Comma plus one goes up there. Coin, silver ring, and fourth floor portal stone. We've already got one. We're good. All right. So, completing this floor would have given, given us access to some magical item that we cannot get because we do not have the spell magic. That's the third floor, then. With that done, our next step is going to be the fourth floor. Just gonna rest, regain our health and, and such first. Huh. We're actually carrying a lot of weight. We need, need to teleport out to sell some of this stuff. Alright. Alright, time to head up to the fourth floor. go. Ooh, creepy. Alright. Oh, nope, down here. There's the yeah, you can take care of those guards easily enough. Flash Almost. Corpse of Artano Guest. All right, what's this? This is the journal of a minor wizard in the Arcane Brotherhood, Artano Geth. His notes are sporadic and personal, detailing his dislike of certain tutors, his tribulations in learning certain magics, and his suspicions over Mogrim. His most recent entry is one of greatest relevance. I should never have joined Romardo. The Archmage disappeared almost as soon as Mogrim began his campaign in the Tower, meaning we were left to fend for ourselves. None of us thought that the man's influence was spread so deeply. Yet it was. After all the fighting was done, I found myself on the losing side. So now I must slave away with Romardo on these bloody golems. Today I finished work on the replication rod, though I surely shall receive no congratulations for it. When it is placed together with the control rod in the replication chamber, the magic started an automatic creation cycle. A golem is formed in a fraction of the time it would have taken. It is powerful as well. I've told Romardo several times that we should be careful not to retain control over these golems, lest they break through the magical barrier around the inner sanctum here. He doesn't heed my warnings, naturally. Bah, I would do anything not to have to slave away for that fool Mogram anymore. Hmm. Interesting. And there's a note here. This note is handwritten and dated from shortly before the events in the tower were likely to take place. It reads, Please inform the apprentices that they are no longer to dump their failed alchemical experiments into the sewer. One can only wonder how those potions affect the water under the city. A signature is indecipherable. That would be that, uh, that would be related to that device. Ah, a golden control rod. A small rod pulses with an unknown magical energy. Engraved on one side is a small picture of what appears to be a helmed horror. Okay. So... That whole thing with the apprentices pouring their potions into the sewers, that must be what was spoken of. Not what was spoken of. That, uh, that one merchant, now we know what allowed that thing that he was creating to, uh, work. And there's the golem replication rod. And a, couple, and a bit of loot. So I think if we put those two things in here... Control and replication. Ah, damn it. We'll be able to make this portal. We'll able, be able to make a golem. This chamber has been formed of marble and complex crystals within its core, containing two depressions along its edge. It practically crackles with dormant magical energy. Examine the depressions. The two depressions are long and slender, very likely receptacles awaiting something to be placed within them. Place a control rod in first. The rod slides into place, stopping with a faint click. It begins to glow slightly and the chamber hums, though it does nothing as of yet. Now the replication rod. 
The second rod slides into place beside the first, stopping with a faint click. Both rods begin to shine brilliantly, the chamber leaping to life. And now we have a helmed horror on our side. This will probably allow us to get into this inner chamber that was mentioned. What after that, I don't know. Lock of this door is too complex to pick and is warded against simple spells. I'm pretty sure he may be a- and he bashed it open. Thank you, Helmed Horror. Is that all you're going to do? Oh, there you go. What are you doing with the host tower? This will not be tolerated. Poison. Damn it, Dalen. Quite a few mages. Uh, kill the mages, please. They are very deadly and I do not want to deal with them. Oh crap, we're almost dead. Okay, kill that golem. Thank you. Okay, there we go. And it seems like the uh, golem we summoned is gone too. Well, that was... dangerous. Cannot rest when there are enemies nearby. Okay, you know what? Drink another one of these. Enemies nearby. Must be that guy who shouted at us. Rimardo Domain. What are you doing within the high tower? This will not be tolerated! I surrender! Let me live, I beg you! Sure. You can probably provide us with some information. Let me just rest so I can regain all my health. All that's left out here is a couple... Uh, bookcases. Come on. And there we go. Please! Please spare my life! I shall give you whatever you like! Answer my questions then, wizard. What? What do you wish to know? Tell me who you are. My name is Rimardo Domine, my lord. Once I was over-wizard of the East Tower. That was before Arklam was overthrown, however. And what are you doing here now, then? Morgrim has been forcing me to create golems. More golems for use in his army. Tell me more about Margrim. I do not know where he comes from, my lord. He claims to serve a greater mistress, but he told us next to nothing of her. Only that she would build us victory. Bring us victory. Instead, she has brought us ruin. Most of the tower is fled, and the ones who remain are enslaved to Margrim's charisma as part of his cult, working to build the army he, des he desires. Just how did the cult manage to take over? Morgrim came to us more than a year ago, though I know not from where. He was charismatic and obviously possessed of strong magic. Arklam listened eagerly to his promises of power. Morgrim hinted that the mistress he served could bring great success to the Arcane Brotherhood. He would tell us nothing of his mistress, but our greed overcame our better judgment. We allowed him to take our pupils under his wing to teach them his secrets. Each became another fanatic in his following, working secretly to do his bidding. It was not long before Mogram had followers throughout the towers, spreading like a plague in our mists. When we finally discovered what was happening, it was too late. Arklam fled from our midst, and Mogram sought to take over. It... it was a long and bloody battle, but Mogram has won. Tell me more about Mogram. I do not know where he can... Okay, we already had that. Why would he need an army? Morgrim believes that there is some hidden power at Neverwinter's heart, and he has rallied his forces to lay claim to it. His mistress needs what lies there. Needs it badly. He has sent his agents throughout the north to search for... more of this power. I do not know what it is ex exactly, however. Are you telling me everything you know? I, I am, of course. 
Are you sure you don't want to tell me more? I... I... No, please, ask me about something else. Tell me what you know. Please, don't hurt me. Morgrim, he seeks something for his mistress. That's... that's all I can tell you. Your life is in my hands. You had best tell me all you know. I... I suppose you're right. What Morgrim looks for so desperately, what he believes lies in Neverwinter and elsewhere in the North, he calls the words of power. The Brotherhood has never heard of these words, and I have no clue what they might be. Morgrim is desperate to locate them for his mistress, however. He has sent his agents throughout the North to track them down. He already has one, I believe, and he will take the rest by force or whatever other means he must. That is all I know, my lord. Please believe me. Fine. I want to ask you something else. What do you wish to know? Who is this Arklam? Arklam Greeth was the Archmage Arcane of the Brotherhood. Until the battles began. I think he fled before the fighting got very bad. He is a powerful mage and will return to teach this usurper a thing or two. I know it. Why Arklam let the Brotherhood fall to the cult, I don't know. Who is Arklam overthrown by? Maugram and his cult. Okay. I want more information on this cult. Maugram is behind it all, my lord. There is some other mistress that he serves, but I know nothing of it. Maugram kept it a secret from all but his followers, and they are fanatics. What does this cult want? Why are they doing all this? He's building an army, my lord. The High Captains, the forces of the North, the Brotherhood. He gathers them all to build a great army. Who are his supporters? Morgrim performs many secret rituals. He has few confidence. The only one he keeps with him constantly is the elf woman, Erebeth. Erebeth. Yes, he... He has seduced her soul, just like all of the, his other followers. I do not know how, but he has pushed her to betray her own people. The elven woman will lead the army he gathers against Neverwinter, a foe she knows intimately. They shall surely fall before her. I don't have any more questions. Will you allow me to flee the, the tower, my lord? I, I have done as you asked. Go. Run and don't come back. Thank you, my lord. You are a kind and merciful man. I swear you shall never see me again. We could have grabbed him of everything he had, but I think this is fine. So that's definitely more information. Oh, a chest. A little pain, but I'm fine. Seventh floor portal stone. Excellent. And a dark seal tower ship. We can get rid of that. Okay. So that is definitely a lot more information. Now we know how Maugra managed to take control of the host tower. And we know more of what he's trying to do. Words of power. That's what he's trying to get. And he has one. Based on what we saw, I think he managed to find it within the Neverwinter Wood and get and got it from the Spirit of the Wood. It sounds like that's where it was hidden. I'm going to drop a few of these things. We don't need as much. I'll hold on to these, but drop the lab notes. Drop that. Drop that. Drop that. And he and apparently there's more of these words in Neverwinter and across the north. And something else in Neverwinter that is really needed by his mistress, whoever has been telling him to do all this. This is very worrying. Well, we'll deal with him more we'll deal with more of this tower in the next episode, because this one's gone on about long enough. Next episode, floors five, six, and seven. That'll be in the next episode, so until then, I'm Chester44, that is Ken Daniels and Dalen Red Tiger. This has been a Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights, and I shall see you all next time.